Bill's Day. It should be. Uh, speaking of beer, I am going to be uh, doing some. Uh, we're going to be doing some reviews real fast. So perfect timing, Seth, for the beer that you brought for me uh, from Norway. One of the four. Um, so I'll just jump into that real fast uh, since, since uh, I guess I'm going first this week. We might um, need some translations. Oh, I'm hoping he gives me some translations. I'm excited <laughs> about this one. All right, let me get the rules off real fast, and then oh, fuck me. Oh no. I forgot to do the word of the week. Ah. Ah, yeah. we'll uh, we'll do some creative editing while. Go for it. We'll do some creative editing. All right, so. <laughs> Fail by me. Bum bum bum. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> we'll do it live. I totally forgot to even put the new word of the week up there. Um, all right, so uh, I have some additional information that Sathros provided me about this beer. This is an IPA, and the pronunciation of this brewery. Let me make sure you guys can see it. Which you're going to get perfectly off of that first try. I'm going to fuck this up royally. No nego? I don't know. I'm going to go with it. No nego. Sure. Sounds right to me. Seth, you tell me what if I'm if I'm doing it wrong. No nego, it says here. So, um, this is an IPA. Uh, it is the first time I've had it. I don't know if this is actually in the United States. I don't think I've seen it. It, it looks familiar. It? Okay. I don't know if, if if I saw it in the card game because um, that card game is international. That's very true. It might have been a card in the hip hop's card game. That's there. We have. Oh, and my wife delivered me tea. tea. Oh, hey. Hot Love toddy. That woman. It's the tea, too. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Thanks, hon. Uh, all right. So, anyway, Nunego, Sath, a bit off, a bit slower, and it might almost be it. Okay. I'll go with it. <laughs> <laughs> a bit off, a bit slow. That's what she no said? Nego. What? Non, non ego? What a beer name. Name for a beer. Well, it's a, what's up, Papa Chubbs? How are you? Tea and beer. Well, I'll get to that in a second here. Holy shit, motherfucking Pat Bellardo. How the hell are you, man? Good to see you. Pat Bellardo here, I've known for, like, ages since college. So, good to see you, man. Thank you for coming coming in and joining us tonight. Uh, all right, so I've never opened it. I never had this beer before. And he, uh, Seth Ross brought this from for me from uh, from uh, Norway when he came out for PAX East. We're going to crack this open. I've got the... I, since this is, this is a Viking beer, uh, I am I, I am uh, drinking out of a Swass Buckler's glass. It's the closest thing I can get for to a Viking glass. So okay. forgive me uh, for this up uh, here. Uh, let me open this bad boy up. All right, so very cool. I'm very excited about this. A Norwegian IPA. This is an American style IPA. Look at that. So far, so good. So far, so good. It's got a, looks like one. It looks like one. Smell. Let's see if it smells like one. Oh, it smells like one. I'm. I'm gonna be honest. I. I don't. I don't know if. I. I don't really know what to expect from here. It does look a little, little cloudy, right? Yeah. Not too bad. So I can't really. Some good carbonation in there. Oh, yeah, I didn't definitely. pour too crazy. It's yeah, still I didn't, I didn't pour too wild, right? Is there the uh, alcohol of 7.5? 7.5 alcohol. Uh, let me make sure that's that's correct. Yeah, 7.5 alcohol. I got that off of Brewer's, uh, uh, not Brewer's, uh, the um, Your Advocate. Your Advocate. Yeah, thank you, Drew. It's been a long day. So you smell, it smells like a, it smells like an IPA. It smells more malty than anything else. This is, I don't think this is, this is the one, I don't think this is the, the 500 sack. So he was giving me some information about about the 500, which is a double IPA, um, but I don't think this is this is it. This is the this is just the the O, I think. Unless I, I'm missing the word 500 on here and I just can't interpret it. So anyway, um, it smells maltier. Surprised the head's holding up uh, with a beer that such high alcohol usually kicks back down pretty quick. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you, I really enjoy this because there is there is a a a, a definite. It's not the 500. Yeah, I, yes, this is not the 500, but this is still a very fantastic Norwegian IPA. I I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna lie. I I was kind of concerned. You know, uh, Norwegian trying to make a uh, a a American IPA type type thing. 
Um, it it is very it is very malty. Uh, there you can definitely taste the there's a little bit of a sweetness to it, but you get that hops there. You can get that hops in the back end there. I don't know what what um what. I'm looking for the profile of the ingredients, and I don't know if this is the same. It has the same. Probably doesn't have it. But anyway, the the, the cool fact about this is that, is that the the name that I'm mispronouncing horribly. All right, what's up, Helminator? How are you, man? Nuego, Nuego, right? Actually, like, Nuego, my ego. No, Awful. Let go of my ego. Hey, there it is. Um, it's it's actually uh, it translates into Naked Island. The name, by the way of the brewery and that's the name of the brewery by the way um but it it, it there there is a point it does point out in this description that uh there are not a lot of uh nude beaches in in uh norway nor would i um know what i expect there to be because it's yeah, right. fucking cold uh but but it's a uh, it's actually it comes from a, a line in a poem about the barren rocks of the coast of southern norway so that's pretty kick-ass um So I'm just going to take a little bit more sip here and get a little bit more deep into this beer. I know, that, sound, that sounds weird, right? I want to get deep into my beer. I mean, the head's holding up pretty pretty decently. And again, it's got a little bit of haziness to it. But again, it's not it's not a dry, it's not a very dry IPA. Um, it's it, it, They were going for a West, West Coast IPA. Um, but generally west coast ipas have that dry finish to yeah. it very super hoppy this is mm -hmm. definitely not that um, but are you getting sort of the typical like citrus and pine very 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 citrusy but nothing nothing like that dry aftertaste that makes me want to go and actually go get a cup of water and down it uh you mean astringency that was that was well hold on hold on that was uh, last week last week's word of the week <laughs> astringency <laughs> We're well, educational, ladies and gentlemen. We're also we're educational. Word of the week this week, so we gotta... No, I, I, I fucked up and <laughs> didn't put the word of the week. I knew I had to do something else. I was sitting here. I was like, am I done? Setting up? Oh, yeah, I'm done. Great. No, I failed. So, <laughs> no, this is this is a fantastic IPA. And I, I don't know if this is in the U.S. I, I highly doubt it. I'm going to go look and see if I can find it in Pennsylvania. Um, but... This is a very good IPA. I like it because it reminds me of some of the British IPAs that I've had um, overseas and here uh, that they actually import to the U.S. Uh, they actually have a, a oh they have they have an an American uh, like uh, English translation to the to the Norwegian. Uh, this is a traditional historical ale type. Uh, we have used American Pacific West Coast hops and added uh, to to add such a beautiful aroma. Um, we serve at 10, 10 degrees Celsius and paired with foods, strong, spicy flavors. IPAs are really good for com comparing to, to spicy flavors, uh, when you, when you actually eat spicy foods, um, that you guys didn't know that I, it, it actually cuts some of the spice, which is nice, the heat, um, Nuego O ales are unfiltered and unpasteurized. Uh, so pour carefully. If you wish to leave natural yeast at the bottom of the of the uh, of the bottle, so yeah, these are unfiltered, which is why we we why we so very ha hazy. So okay. So we te te technically do uh, like a, a rating system here as well. We kind of use the un un uh, untapped rating system. I'm gonna go go with uh, go with the guts so though. I'm gonna go give this a definite four because this is something that I could de definitely see myself doing uh, a session with. Uh, even though it's 7.5, it doesn't taste like it's a very high alcohol. Um, but it is, it is very checklist, checklist. Che yeah, I know. I need a checklist, Seth. Sorry, I screwed up. <laughs> um, no, but I would give this a definite four, uh, four out of four, uh, four out of five stars here. I mean, this is a very fantastic, sessionable uh, ale to me. Uh, and like I said, it doesn't taste that very high alcohol. But uh, I would definitely. Down. I would definitely give this give this a four out of five. Thank you for the uh, for the host, uh, Sammy, and the auto hosts, uh, Ch Chubbs. I appreciate that. Um, so again, four out of five, and that's what I would give the uh, the the Indian pale Indian pale ale. Here I go that I I cannot pronounce uh, at all, but this is a great beer. So thank you again, Sathros, for bringing this for me uh, for me from from uh, Norway. That is this is such a treat. I do appreciate it. 
Um, no, it's it's a so command, my good man. So command. Ah, crap. Ah, crap. All right. <clears throat> bump, bump, bump. All right. So, since I'm normally not the first one to do it, I'll let you guys uh, fight over who's going next. So, uh, I think Drew said second. So. Yeah, I'm good. I think the girls went to sleep. Second. All right. All right. Oh, bollocks. Went the wrong screen again. There we go. Jesus. I know. Professionals we are. <clears throat> professionals. Yeah. We're getting there. One day. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, this uh, week, I'm trying out... Rock Art Brewery in Vermont. They're doing a uh, Vermont Maple Wheat Ale. Um, I've had this beer once before. Well, twice before. First time, it was amazing. Second time, way too sweet. Um, when you add maple syrup to a beer, it can get very, 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 very strong very quickly. So I'm sort of excited to give it a try this year. I think it's their um, like third or fourth year doing it. We're right off the bat. Nose, maple all the way. Um, you kind of get the, kind of get a banana flavor too that you get in the, um, you get in a wheat beer from the yeast. So hopefully it didn't sort of change that out. Um, this beer is also um, unfiltered. So it's a fairly large, if you can sort of see that big old hunk of yeast in the bottom. Now, I'm not quite sure if I should mix it, but I don't think I'm going to because I don't want to get the whole lot of banana flavor with the maple. So. Ooh. Heavy pour. Yeah. Pretty effervescent, usually sort of typical in a uh, sort of a wheat beer with, with a certain style of yeast. Um, comes off a little ambery, a little or, oh, I guess sort of an orangey amber kind of thing. That's basically what it looks like to me. Big banana flavor in the nose. Um, that's usually typical for any sort of um, Belgian yeast. You get sort of a high, sort of fruity, estery smell. Ester will be another uh, <laughs> order of the day someday. Yes, I definitely need to, to add that as a to the list there. Yeah, because it's a, it's a big descriptor for most like Belgian beers or um, like Hefeweizen, which is, I guess, a Belgian beer. Yep. But um, it can come off very banana y, sort of clovey, almost like banana bread kind of sweetness to it. I'm sort of mostly getting all of that kind of as the uh, sort of dominant smell. There's a little bit of maple there. That may be like the cause of the sweet smell. Hmm. Taste-wise, um, well, the, the smell of sort of a Hefeweizen, you would think something very light and kind of that sort of clovey banana flavor. Right off the bat, I get sort of malt, which is surprisingly for um, a wheat beer. We beer is you sort of, you sort of get a sort of very light flavor, so not a whole lot to it. Um, I guess I guess that maltiness could be from the uh, maple, kind of sort of disguising it as like a caramelly kind of sweetness. Um, it's pretty good. It's not overly sweet. Um, it doesn't taste like I'm like eating a maple sugar candy or like drinking syrup. Um, hop character, there isn't any. Usually not really found in a wheat beer. Unless you're doing like a white IPA. But, um, so but the big flavors I'm getting is sort of that banana, that maple caramel toffee note. Um, but, so it's a good, it's a lot better than it has been in the past. Um, uh, ranking wise, I could probably give it around a four, four and a half as well. Oh wow! Yeah, I would. That's because I'm not a big fan of wheat beers or sort of Hefeweizens. Those beers are very sort of one note to me. I get sort of the, that yeast flavor. With this kind of obviously it's not much of a Hefeweizen, but it's very a um, this variation a little different. As I like sort of a darker beer, that more caramel, maple kind of note in a beer than sort of that light banana flavor. I'm probably going to get this again. I'm probably going to get it for this weekend and drink it while brewing. Nice. Yeah. Um, imagine when this thing warms up and get more of a spicy banana flavor to it as well. That usually comes up in the yeast. But um, also, I left a lot of the yeast behind, so if I sort of mix that up in there, I probably would get more of that spicy yeast flavor. So is it is it, like you said that before, you had it before, was it in a bottle that you had it before? It was super, yep. super sweet? It was the uh, same bottle. Same, same bottle? Uh, yeah. <coughs> 
same 22 ounce bottle. Okay. So four out of five. I see. I don't know. Mm-hmm. With me, I I kind of kind of look at the ranking system as like I don't I don't go above four unless I'm like, mm-hmm. bang, you yeah. know, I'm I'm that you know I just can't get yeah. like that type of uh like any beer. Nothing really knocks me off my ass, you know, and say ooh. Yeah, I uh I sort of go by um, ranking on each style, like okay. what I like on each style. Now, like my favorite one is this. Like I sort of go based off oh to style this should sort of fits in the parameters because it's kind of how I, this is how i brew i brew beers for competitions you need to make a beer for right. a certain style it works like a dog show kind of thing so there's like guidelines to each beer but this sort of not being a typical style i can go sort of anywhere i want yeah so because it's not hefe and it's a wheat beer so a wheat beer it has its own category but not with maple in it because maple makes it extremely more sweeter the alcohol percentage is a little teared off So four out of uh, four point five out of five for that. that yep. beer. I wouldn't give it a full five because maybe if I went a little drier, it would be sort of perfect. Right. But it's a little too sweet, but not extremely sweet like it was in the past. Okay, that's cool. And is this is this a local beer you can only get in uh, in Vermont? Because I haven't seen that before. Uh yes, Rock Art I believe is uh, Vermont only. Okay. They're a brewery that was, um, I guess, in the limelight about was it four or five years ago. They have a beer called uh, Vermonster, which is a, I think, a 12 and a half alcohol oh, wow. strong ale. And Monster Energy Drink came from and tried to sue them for stealing their name. Oh. But wait, yep. how, how, was they, how are they going to sue them for stealing their uh, name when it's... Vermont, Vermonster. I don't know. But, um, so... Silly. Rock Art went did a counter suit and said, "No, we were actually been around twenty years before you guys were a company." So, no. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping they hoping they won that one. Yeah, I'm not so. quite sure where it went from there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, actually, Vermont's so into their beer that their prices dropped, tanked in Vermont. Oh really? I think they uh like their uh sales dropped like twenty percent, something ridiculous. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So like, okay. Well, just kidding. We'll stop that. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, oh, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, Steve, are you ready to go? I am ready to go. Boom. Uh, I am uh, <laughs> going for the trifecta. From <laughs> Thanks to my friend, Terry, uh, who uh, brought me a, a really delightful four-pack, and this is Ooh. the third of the four. Um, the fourth one isn't from Alchemist, but we'll save that for next week. Uh, but uh, to kind of round out the trifecta, I figured uh, might as well go for uh, one of Alchemist's uh, other fairly recent beers in the last few years, at least, um, the Crusher. Uh, the theme, obviously, uh, you can kind of tell by the can, and the can art is definitely still uh, a hot favorite. So uh, I'm looking forward to this taste because uh, I'm pretty sure I don't think I've ever had a chance to get near this particular brew. Um, so this, this one is, uh, this one's a fresh taste, uh, not, it's not a crawler, you guys, sorry. No, it's it's not not a crawler. It's it's not a giant. It's just a one pint can and (laughs) doesn't enforce the must drink from can rule around the top of the can. So I get to pour this whole thing into a glass so we can actually see it this time. It's like this disgusting, scuzzy looking beer. Oh, well, shit. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's one of those, what, it, do, it, do we get it like, like last week, which was it's like, oh, maybe you don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I got the, almost the whole pint into uh, this. I pulled a, a nice, uh, tall chalice glass out. Fancy tulip. Yeah, it's not, uh, not too bad. Um, actually, it's probably a little bit more stirred up than it should be. Um, I'm, I was anticipating a little bit less head on, on the glass, but it's, uh, but I was, I was taking it off of those damn four pack click holders that oh, they have yeah those things and as soon as the can releases from the, the 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 lid holder it like it jerks the can so it probably got shook up a little bit when i was taking it out i should have uh, done that a couple days ago but anyway wow that's uh once again pretty bright yellow in the can um so yeah i don't necessarily have to drink it from the can though so um i get to see this one actually yet yet again um I wish, yeah, sooner or later, I'm going to, well, I'm going to be going up to Alchemist probably in the next couple of weeks. 
So I would love to line up a flight of the three of these, um, having like Crusher, um, the Focal Banger, and the Heady Topper all next to each other just to try to get them. Uh, There's more beers though. There's some, yeah, I think there's like three more beers that they don't have, really? they haven't had yet. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I'm getting a lot of great floral notes out of this. Yeah, it's definitely uh, smelling like all kinds of delicious hops, and I am a hop fan, so. Yes, you are. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that one's nice and uh, nice and rich. I wouldn't say any any real bitter like the Focal Banger was last week. Focal Banger had that little bit of bitter up front, and then it kind of smoothed out. This has got a pretty dry finish, but it's not not as bitter up front. Mm. Yeah, that's delicious. Yeah, that's going to be another one um, that's way up there. Um, again, number ratings are kind of hard to kind of hard to throw at this. It's a Wednesday night. <laughs> And I just, you know, drank a glass of water before I got on here. So uh, let's go back to the description. Uh, Alchemist's website doesn't really have a lot of detail about any any one beer. They just nope. have a, <laughs> and a couple of blog entries. That's about it, which is great. That's that's pretty easy going. Um, but um, it looks like the Beer Advocate, um, at least the title text, has a comment probably from Alchemist. It's probably from... Uh, John Kimmich, the, the brewer at uh, Alchemist. But uh, he's saying the Crusher is American Double IPA. Started looking that years ago in an old pub. Hop heads were constantly asking for more. So in the words of Frank Zappa, did you say you want some more? Well, here's some more. <laughs> because while I enjoy the hops with the rest of the pod, I still try to maintain some semblance of balance and drinkability. And I, I, I buy that here. That's definitely got some some balance to it even though um, if you're a hop lover, you'll, you'll still get plenty of hops out of this. Beer is oozing with hop flavor and aroma, a very dry finish. Oozing. I can definitely go with that too. Uh, enjoy responsibly. This one can sneak up on you because it is a, uh, a pint of 9%. So, <laughs> so I will sleep very well in about 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm digging this beer too. Um, man. Like I said, I'm pretty generous with my ratings number. Um, and I rarely, I rarely hit the five O mark. Um, but, uh, I think, I think Hetty Topper, I know last week, Focal Banger, and this one's probably a 4.5 as well, based on my love of hops and the way this is kind of smoother than Focal Banger. And I gave Focal Banger 4.5 last week. So I have to give this at least 4.5. <laughs> so yeah, we're, uh, we're at a 4.5 with this one. Nice. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, yet again, Delivered from Alchemist, and let me make sure my prop is high enough there so my camera sees it. There we go. So, cheers, um, Alchemist Crusher. And you Are can't you get that he down here in uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, but I mean that's that's local. I have one. You have, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're pretty limited. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way you can actually get that down here. It's like mm-hmm. uh, it's like Trillium. Like uh, when I brought that back, I was so super stoked. Which, by the way, Steve, I still have your beer. So <laughs> I still have a beer for you. Um, which is another great, uh, great. I'm on my way over. IPA. I'm on my way over. <laughs> yeah. Well, Owen just woke up. So uh, you want to rock him to sleep? Sure. <laughs> Not only and and handling, handling <laughs> um, So I, I I queued it up. I queued it up 